right, all right, your boys are back with another episode of Marvel's What If. So today's episode, we got episode four. Title Today's episode is titled, What If Iron Man Crashed Into the Grandmaster? I'm going to start off with, what's your opinion on this episode? So I'm going to let you go first. What you think? I know when we begin every single episode, I say this is the best episode, but this is by far the best episode of all four episodes that have dropped within the last four days. <laughs> Like, I gotta every, agree with you on this one, yo. This one was great. Something about something about cars, fast cars, is just puts it over top for me. But I loved it. Tony Stark loved it. Grandmaster Tony Stark killed this episode too. Yeah, he killed it. He definitely killed it. So I loved it. All right, for um, before I start uh, with the episode or review of the episode, um, I'm gonna stay a little something, um, a little detail. So this episode takes place in 2008 during the first Avengers movie. But as we know, uh, we have uh, the Watcher explains that Tony didn't make it back this time from the uh, wormhole, I believe is what it's called, the little portal. As the portal closes, we got Tony traveling through time. I mean, well, space, sorry, correction, space, and then lands into uh, planet Sakaar and literally crash lands in front of the Grandmaster. For those who don't know who the Grandmaster is, he is a godlike being, an immortal creature who is in the comics who is also related to uh, the Collector. They are brothers. The Grandmaster is a a godlike being who loves competition, who loves games. He loves little mini games. That's his. That's what he's known for. Like his brother is known for collecting objects, like a hoarder. But <laughs> it's neither here or there. So we go back to Tony crash landing into Sakar in front of the Grandmaster. And everybody knows at this point that Tony has destroyed the Shatari army. So he's somewhat of a uh, universal hero. And as we know, time travels differently in um, Sakaar. So we don't know how much time he's losing as he's spending each every sec- each and every minute on planet Sakaar. So we got Tony who is befriending the Grandmaster. And he watches the Gladiator games going on. And we have a little, um, we got some recurring characters coming in. We got Jeff uh, Goldblum reprising his role as the Grandmaster, which was a, was a definitely like a nice added touch to it. Mm-hmm. We got uh, Korg. Saigo Atiki comes back to reprise his role as Taigo, uh, as uh, Korg. And then we got um, a Valkyrie as well. So Tony crash, Tony crash lands the party, well, crashes the party, and tries to say the Valkyrie from a giant elephant creature, which is like the champion at the time. And Gamora, and Gamora comes in seeking for revenge on Tony for destroying uh, his father's pl- um, plans. So at this point, they both get uh, kidnapped, <laughs> locked up. They get put in a room, which is funny. <laughs> you got Korg in the background <laughs> being a little pervert. Uh, we got a little Easter egg here too. So for many, for many who don't know, Tony has got quite a body racked up on his list. So for those who don't know, Tony and Gamora hit it off at one point in the comics. <laughs> what do you think? What did what did uh, Grandmaster call Tony? Mojo Man. Uh, he called him Mojo Man, and he called him Rocket Man. <laughs> a little Elton John reference. <laughs> <laughs> I like Mojo. Uh, man. Mojo, man, that was funny. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> going back to the story, Tony ends up uh, escaping from the love room or the love dungeon, or however they want to call it. Forms an alliance with Cord and traps Gamora back in the lo- in the love dungeon, and then tries to escape Sakar. And as they're escaping, they realize Tony realizes that he needs to save. Uh, the citizens of Sakaar from the Grandmaster and decides to challenge the Grandmaster to a game, a race. So little 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 Easter eggs here. For those who haven't watched, I mean for those who watched movies like Death Race, it got a little bit of Mad Max inside of it. Um I ain't I ain't gonna lie to you. I even see a little bit of I always go as far as say Mario Kart. Hot Wheels. <laughs> when, hot Wheels. Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels, okay. Uh, he challenged Grandmaster to a to a race. Winner winner wins all, and I think 
Tony has to serve the Grandmaster if he loses, and if Grandmaster loses, he has to turn Planet Sakaar to him. And if Tony loses, he has to give that Iron Man suit that he built on Sakaar. That mug was dope. I know it was dope, though. <laughs> As we know it, we got the race going on. Tony ends up working alongside Valkyrie, uh, Korg, and Gomorrah to defeat the Grandmaster. Grandmaster cheats, starts off the race first, seconds before the uh, the light turns on, and has little tricks, little little landmines, and little you know decoys to stop Tony and his friends from beating him. Uh, Tony ends up winning the match and ends up beating Grandmaster. Gamora ends up sticking him with a, a melting stick, I believe it was called. Mm-hmm. And then we have a little reference to uh, Wizard of Oz. I was going to say it looked like a pruner, like in Loki. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, it was pretty funny. He's like, oh, this feels pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm melting. <laughs> I'm melting. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! So then Valkyrie ends up becoming uh, gets crowned king of Sakar. Little Easter egg for uh, Thor Ragnarok. She becomes king of Asgard. No nice little touch. I like it. Mm-hmm. Overall, I think it was one of the best episodes out there. Oh, before I even for, uh, before I even go continue, I forgot the ending, the exact ending. Tony and Gamora uh, meets Thanos. They end up defeating Thanos. Proning him, mm, yeah, melting him. Whatever you want to, whatever you want to say. They end up defeating him. So, is there anything you want to say? You want to add on to it? Uh, like I said, it was a phenomenal episode. The best episode. Take that with a grain of salt because the next one may be even better. But I feel <laughs> like Tony Stark and uh. And the Grandmaster, they definitely they made they made this episode quite entertaining. The concept of the blend of Mad Max, Death Race, and like I said, Hot Wheels. That was a good good concept to it. I love the I love the racing. Um all around it was a it was a phenomenal episode. Phenomenal episode. I I I I have no complaints about it to be honest with you. That's how that's how much I enjoyed the episode. Um, same here I, I did like the chemistry that everybody brought to the table i mean that was amazing uh i didn't think about having a storyline like this where tony would land up uh would land on sakar but it was pretty interesting kind of reminds me of one of the comics of um planet hulk when um hulk had pinned reed richards tony stark captain america and i believe dr strange and i think black Bolt as well if i'm if i remember like he put them in a gladiator game to the, fight to the death uh also one little, one little tiny little Easter egg as well for those who uh, were curious about when uh, the Watcher was explaining himself in the beginning of the episode. So this episode was supposed to be in season one, I believe, before episode eight. I mean, after episode eight and before episode nine, but they didn't have a chance to finish and polish the episode. So they saved this this particular episode for season two because, as we know, this is the same Gomorrah who was who was taken from her timeline and and was added to the uh, the multiverse of heroes for the watcher in season 1 if you remember that correctly cuz we didn't get a back we didn't get a background story on her yeah i was going to ask of like how did she just randomly come to this planet just to and and you find tony stark <laughs> yeah i know right well she wanted revenge because remember like um grandmaster stated to tony that uh, that he he's like well known throughout the entire galaxy. People know he was a hero, so she wanted she wants revenge for her father. Right, makes sense. Correct. But, uh, like I liked how Gamora. I, I feel like at the time Gamora really can we really say like is this an accurate portrayal of Gamora? Because I'm not sure how soon after. Event the first Avenger movie till we get to Guardians of the Galaxy, but she was already on on pace to betray Thanos anyway by hiding the Soul Stone. True. But in this timeline it's 2008, so 
uh, Age of Ultron never happened. Infinity War never happened because they ended up defeating Thanos. Um, Tony's uh, Iron Man three probably probably could still happen, but in a, I think it would be like a a different scenario. But it could be similar. So a lot of characters want to be made like Ultron, like for example, because the Mind Stone will no longer exist. Um, it's weird because you think about it because they they altered the entire timeline. So I mean that's. There isn't really much of a grand threat anymore. They defeated Thanos, so pretty much they took away Avengers 2, 3, and 4. But I could see them bringing somebody else in, being a major so, threat in that timeline. So it's basically a two, it's two years from Avengers to Guardians of the Galaxy. Correct. Okay. I, I, I just feel like when we, when we sit, when we... That's the same issue that I have with Gamora and the timeline because it was the same thing in Endgame. Gamora mm-hmm. was loyal to Thanos, but at the same time, this is around the same time she hit the Soul Stone. Uh, I could... Uh... I guess so, yeah. I mean, that, I didn't, I didn't think that far ahead, but uh, yeah. But this is a this is a Gamora who's still evil, who still believes in her father, who works under her father. So she hasn't had a change of heart yet, like in Guardians one. So I think Tony changes her in this point, making her a, a somewhat of an antihero, because mm-hmm. basically all she wanted to do was to be set free from her father. Remember that she said that she couldn't return to her father without Tony, and at this point, Thanos, I want to say, is scared of Tony, but he saw him as a threat. So he couldn't be able to, he couldn't afford to keep him alive. Right. Because they both are cursed, like he said, with knowledge. Yeah. And I've always, I've always was curious about the connection between Thanos and Tony Stark. Like their minds are like synced together or something. Like, how does that work? Well, I wouldn't say they were synced. I see. I see it more like they're both cursed with knowledge. They they love to learn. The more they learn, the more that they get into different ideas. Like Thanos knew about the celestial, so he had to do what he had to do, and he took matters in his own hand. For example, like Tony created time uh, uh, time travel. By doing that, he doomed the multiverse. And as Thanos, you know, he snapped half of all life to save. Um, the universe from um, celestials from being burned, born, but all he really did was spare a little bit more time. But in this timeline, I guess you could say that the celestial that was on Earth already probably was sped up because they never had to snap half of all life. Right. So I can see the celestial. I mean, not not celestial. Uh, the Eternals movie still happening, but it would have completely. It would be completely different though. At this point now, it'd just be sped up faster. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the whole time travel thing because it probably wouldn't happen because Tony would no, no longer need to find time travel in order to get the Infinity Stones because in this timeline, the Infinity Stones are no longer a threat. So there's no reason to go back in time to go get the, the Infinity Stones. So kind of neglecting the fact that Kane the Conqueror would have never existed, which is a pretty wild idea. That's, that, that's deep. That's deep. <laughs> Another deep thing, too, a lot of people haven't really talked about yet is that if you remember in after, uh, well, yeah, after Avengers 1 and in, in, in Iron Man 3, he was a recovering alcoholic. Remember, he gave up alcohol and he was going through PTSD from, from surviving the uh, wormhole. But he landed on the Grandmaster's um, planet and the PTSD didn't really affect him, I guess, because he didn't have time to cope with it. Mm. But you would think that that's a major that's a major thing because he st- he was supposed to stop drinking, but he was drinking on Planet Sakaar, and then his PTSD didn't really kick in. But I mean, hey, that's just little details that I paid attention to. Like, hey, what happened to his PTSD? Like, I thought he was scared because he was supposed to die in space. You know what I mean? Because he had dreams of Thanos coming back. He just didn't know who Thanos was. Right. Hmm. And then when he found out who Thanos was through Gamora, he was like, "Oh, so that's who's who attacked New York." Oh, I'm gonna stop him. So I guess he didn't really like you know he didn't have time to cope with that idea. He just wanted to save the world from Thanos. I'll let it go. 
<laughs> I'll let it go. I mean, it's a, little, it's, a, it's, it's a lot for 30 minutes, but I mean, hey, these are little details I remember, like, because that's what cre- helped them create uh, it, uh, Ultron, remember? To build a suit around the, the Earth in order to protect the Earth from Thanos, which at the time right. he didn't know who it was yet. Mm-hmm. And then they find they find that they break Tesseract and end up fighting the Mind Stone, correct? Right. Oh no, no, not not the Tesseract. I'm sorry. The um um the stick, the, Lo- the Loki staff. The staff, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I like this episode. It's one of my top favorites now. Like I said, number one was episode one was my favorite, but I'm actually gonna put this number one now. So you're putting. This number one, Episode four. Nebula is number two. Uh, well, uh, yeah, and then episode, I will put episode two as number three, and then episode three is number four. So that's the Peter Quill one. Your is your least favorite? No, the Happy Hogan is is your the Happy least Hogan, favorite. the Christmas special. Yeah, that's my least favorite. I think I'm gonna go. This episode's number one. Happy's number two. Nebula's number three. And the uh, the Peter Quill coming back to Earth four for me so far. All right, not bad, not bad. All right, so we got tomorrow's episode. Uh, so we got episode five. It is titled, What If Captain Carter Fought the Hydra Stomper? Ooh, okay, this might be pretty good. So we got Peggy Carter coming back as uh, Captain Carter. I got to see this one. I, I do like her as Captain America, though. Fights the the what? The Hydra Stomper. 15 seconds. What is that? If I can remember, it's a robot. I don't remember what it looks like at the top of my head. Okay. I guess we'll... We'll find, we'll find out. out what, and then they, we'll, I'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time for the next episode. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.